Hi guys, it's John again with another benchmark comparison test between the Exynos 2200 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. So these are now both on the August security update and there haven't been any major improvements in the notes at all but we're going to run through the benchmarks as normal and see how they both get on. Now they're all both set exactly the same as you can see here, connected to their own Wi-Fi and both set to 80% brightness. So let's get on with the Geekbench CPU and see how they both do. We'll also go through the compute score as well because it's quite a quick test. So we'll get those done together and we'll compare the results to July's scores. Okay then, so we can see here that there has been a massive increase on the Exynos 2200 single core with a very slight decrease in its multi-core. The Snapdragon stayed about the same within a couple of percent, so no major changes there. But yeah, it's interesting to see the single core increasing so much. That could be because we had a 900 odd score in test three last month. But yeah, the single core does appear to be getting slightly closer to the Snapdragon, but it's still a long way off, I think. I'm not sure we'll ever see those get, you know, as high as the 1200 mark but who knows, we may do in the future. But yeah, the mod core is still way ahead there on the Exynos in comparison, but overall the Snapdragon wins in its single core still, and the Exynos in its multi-core. So moving on to the compute scores as well, and it's a decrease on both, but a bigger decrease there on the Exynos. As you can see, a 6% decrease on average compared to last month's scores, but yeah, nothing too interesting there in the Geekbench compute score but it is still beating the Snapdragon by quite a long way. Right, next up is the Antutu benchmark. So we'll run through three of these tests and see what the final scores are like. Okay, again, you can see here with the scores, there's only a couple of percent difference compared to last month, and that could be due to heat. It could just be random because obviously every time you run the Antutu score, you will get a slightly different result. So nothing really to talk about here, apart from the fact the Snapdragon is still beating the Exynos quite comfortably there with a score of 818,000. 169 on average. So yeah, still quite low scores. I know a lot of people do comment down below with how much better the scores they are getting on theirs are, so I don't know why mine are just not as good as yours, but obviously to keep things the same, this is obviously the same phones that I've had since launch, and they've both got the same apps installed, so that's all I can say really. You can see the Snapdragon always is a bit hotter still than the Exynos, but still, even at these temperatures, I would expect better performance from both. Okay, now we'll move on to the Antutu stress test here. So this just goes through 15 minute stress test and it does it three times. And again, keep an eye on the temperature on the Snapdragon. It's always a lot hotter than the Exynos. So whether the Exynos is just throttling more, we will find out in the final graphs when the three tests are completed. Okay, so here are the Exynos results from the stress test. And we can see compared to last month's, I'd say the first test looks pretty similar actually. You've got the throttling here on the cores and this similar sort of up and down, just over 50% mark here in the middle. And again, we had a similar issue here on last month's test and at the end. But where it really performs better here is in the second test. So we can see here, this is much better uh, performance CPU wise that we want to see but that is down to the fact that the cores have been clocked here similar to what we used to see on the Snapdragon with a straight line here just around 1500 megahertz. Now compare that to last month it's very similar we've got another lock here at around 1500 
and we see this similar 80% performance. So it does seem that the x does perform better at this lower speed and as you can see in the final test we've then gone back to a slightly uh, worse test I guess overall with the CPU getting a bit warmer. We can see here we've gone under 1000 megahertz, which is not anything you really want to see on a flagship device so that is quite a shame. We could see here in last month's update it didn't go anywhere near that line on the Core 7 here but it has gone below a thousand at least which is not very good at all. It does then go back up again afterwards but yeah you can see here with the performance it's got that big drop there when the core gets clocked down. So moving on to the Snapdragon, it's a slightly messy affair as always with these peaks and troughs here constantly going up and down. But overall I would say quite safely that there's nothing really to worry about here in the Snapdragon. It's performing as well as it has done and I'd say even maybe slightly better in test one compared to last month here. We've got less peaks down below 60 I'd say overall. Second test very similar as well to last month's but maybe a bit more stable in the higher performance rating between 60 and 80 and 100 and then moving on to the final test we can see again very very similar to last month's here maybe a few more peaks down below 60 compared to last month but overall i'd say nothing to worry about it's about the same as it was the previous month where it is performing as well as to be expected okay next we're going to move on to the slingshot test here so we will run this three times and see how it compares to last month's And here are the results so we can see that again not really a huge difference compared to last month just half a percent decrease on the Exos and a 1.5 percent increase on the Snapdragon so I'd say that's within reasonable margin of error and rerunning the test again would probably get slightly different results so again no massive improvements there on either phone but it is worth noting obviously that the Snapdragon is running a lot hotter so it's got up to 43 degrees whereas the Exynos in its final test 3 only got up to 41 degrees. Okay, last but not least is the Wildlife Extreme test. So this will run 20 tests in a row and get to the highest and lowest loop and put those in a result table at the end. So let's go through this and see how it goes. Okay, so this is the only test this month where there has been a change in the winner of one of the scores and that is where the lowest loop now goes across to the Exynos. So previously best lowest loop was on the Snapdragon side but that has now moved across as the Exynos just about pips it to the post with 1293 versus 1269. However the Snapdragon is still easily getting the best loop score with 2095 and the stability still sticks with the Exynos at 66.8% which means slightly more stable but that does mean more likely that it is getting clocked and being slowed down to make it more stable so take that as you will. Whether you would actually see this effect in any games is highly unlikely but it is worth noting nonetheless. Okay, so here are all the final scores in a list so you can see them all together and you can see, like I said, the only thing that's changed was this lowest loop switched from last month on the Snapdragon has moved across to the Exynos this month. Again, it's only a few marks in it so nothing really to worry about but it does mean that the Exynos is now winning 7 out of the total number of tests and the Snapdragon has now gone down to 5. Still very little between the two. We still see that the Exynos is obviously better at compute, whereas the Snapdragon is still better at gaming overall, apart from the fact that physics work better on the Exynos. 
graphics are always going to be better with the Adreno. So until we get some proper optimization for the Exynos, we're going to be seeing this for some time to come. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do like and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on notification bells so you're notified when I release a video. And also let me know what your scores are down below because it still is interesting to see what other people get and just to see how bad my phones are performing, which they do seem to most of the time. But again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.